Now let's take a look at entering a transcript onto the language sample template. I'm going to take the first 15. So in this format, you're going to see that every other utterance is the adult's utterance. It's starting to count the number of words, which is showing up here. We don't want the adult utterances to be counted, so you have to indicate that they are the adult. So choose A here. And I can copy and paste anything that has a dropdown, as long as what I'm pasting is available in the dropdown. So I'm going to do that. And now the word count is disabled. Once I choose child, the utterance number and the morphemes will start counting. I'm going to copy and paste this here for every other row. The utterance numbers are sequentially numbered. And if you change anything after you've labeled it, it will reorder the utterance numbers. And for every utterance that has a C, it will calculate and change the utterance number. But this is adult, so we'll change that. It's up to you if you want to include the adult utterances. But for this demo, I'm going to only include the child utterances. So I'm going to paste them in from where I transcribed them before. I'm going to copy and paste that for all of these rows here. I should have a total of 50 utterances. Now, in order to count the morphemes for each of the child's utterances, you will have to indicate a morpheme by entering a slash mark after every morpheme. So we'll do a few here. And it's up to you how you're counting morphemes. You can count the pronoun here and the auxiliary verb. And here is a situation where the child said something that was unintelligible. And how I would mark that up is put a parenthesis and maybe three X marks. It doesn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase. What's going to happen is anything that's in parentheses will be disregarded in terms of the word count. In this utterance, there are five words that are counted. One, two, three, four, five. If the child sent something unintelligible and I marked it with three X marks, but I did not put the slash mark because it's not an actual morpheme, the word count would go from five to six, which is inaccurate. If you put the unintelligible word in parentheses, the word count is going to adjust and it's not going to read that as an actual word for the transcript. Now I already had this marked with an underscore. It's actually a reduplicated word, so you could hyphenate it and count it as one morpheme. Here we have two morphemes produced. You may or may not include interjections, but those are all decisions that you would make. This interjection here probably should not have originally counted as a utterance, but I'm going to include it anyway. This interjection here probably should not affect the word count. So I'm going to ignore it by using the parentheses and count the rest of the morphemes here. I am going to consider this as two morphemes. I originally had an underscore for one of the characters that the child was playing with. And the reason why I did that was because if I didn't join them with the underscore, it would count as two words. I don't think that it should count as two words. But there are situations where you would want to count them as two words. But in this case, Either I can hyphenate it or use an underscore. In this case, I'll just hyphenate it. And it'll show up as one word. If I were to put a dash but spaces in between, it's going to count that incorrectly. So I would make sure that there are no spaces, whether I use the dash or an underscore. So that's an option. I think by using the underscore, it looks less like a hyphenated word. So it's up to you, whichever you decide to use. I'm going to adjust this and exclude the interjection. And here I see that there was an unintelligible word, which is going to get ignored in the word count. So now we have five words in this utterance. I don't think this should have been recorded as a separate utterance. So this is utterance 29 and this is utterance 30 because it looks like a restart. And here I see that there was an unintelligible word. And this was actually not a separate morphing. It was an error that I had made earlier. Okay, so I think that that's everything for my morpheme counting. And once you have all the slash marks recorded, unintelligible words are excluded by using the parentheses. Interjections such as this, if you're not counting them as a word, you can exclude as well by using that parentheses structure. 
if, for example, the child produced any disfluencies, you can put that into parentheses as well, whether it is a phonemic disfluency, the word count won't change. If it was a word or syllable disfluency, you can enter in the parentheses here with the slash mark so that the morpheme is counted there. And even if it was a phrase, you could put that in parentheses too to show that there was a disfluency at the phrase level. Your word count and your morpheme count would not be incorrect if you did it this way. At the same time, you're still able to see the actual production. So now we have an estimated MLU in morphemes as well as in words. And both of these are taking the number of utterances and dividing by either the morphemes or the number of words. And you're getting the average there. And that's it. That's how you enter and code your transcript. If you expand this section here, you will see a recap of the different codes that you can use to mark up the transcript. Forward slash will count each morpheme. Anything that's offset in parentheses in column F under the transcript column will be excluded from either the word count or the morpheme count. As long as you don't put the slash mark inside the parentheses, which you would have no reason to do that because it doesn't count as a morpheme. But just in case, it will count it as a morpheme if you make that error. So anything that's in parentheses will be excluded in terms of the word count. You can enter disfluencies there at the phonemic level, at the word level, at the syllable level, etc. Or you can use the parentheses to mark unintelligible words in the transcript. You can use a hyphen to count compound words as long as you enter the hyphen without any spacing and only use one slash mark to count that morpheme. Or you could use an underscore if you wanted to count reduplicated words. And anything that has two words that you shouldn't count as two words, with adding the underscore, you're taking the space away so the word count won't see it as two words. It'll see this whole thing as one unit. And here there's a possessive S that needs to be counted. Next, we'll take a look at the type token ratio and the word class analysis.